So as promised, um, I'm just doing a quick video on how I'm doing the moulding process. Uh, today I went and got some, uh, it's a water-based clay, it's about the same sort of consistency as like plasticine. Um, it has to be water-based though so that it doesn't uh, interfere with the setting of the silicon. This is going to be for the terminator head. The thickness of that is about 2 inches or about 5 centimetres, thereabouts anyway. Uh, and I'm just getting ready to do that. I've gone for a rounder sort of shape to uh, cut down hopefully on the amount of material that I need to use. The original seam line on this one ran sort of sideways down the nose here uh, and across the top of the head and across to the back of the head. Um, I had to do, this is all nice and smooth now, but I had to do a bit of filling and, and fixing of those sort of details. I want to make the mould as seamless as I possibly can, so I'm going to do things a bit differently to the way it was originally done. And what I'm going to do is run my seam line um, around this part of the bottom of the skull. The idea being with that too is that any seam line that should show up uh, should be pretty invisible because once the skull is actually mounted um, all that potential seam stuff and everything else will be underneath. So as I start to do this um, what I want to be careful of is that I'm not using uh, or getting the clay stuck in these uh, line details that I spent all that time sort of cleaning up so um, it's really just a matter of uh, positioning the clay in such a way that it it is high enough that it sits flat okay and doesn't lose those details so that when it's removed we get that seam line back bit I do want to be careful of now is making sure that this this edge is really clean so I want to work backwards and forwards to make sure that that edge is clean without filling up any of the lines Okay, so that looks pretty close, so I'm going to add that to the box now. And I just want to try and centre it fairly well to the box. And give that a really good push down. Okay, now you're not going to really see what I'm doing now, but really what I'm doing now is just feeling around with my finger and making sure that the actual clay comes up to the base of that piece that I've created. So I'm just going to add some tint here. Just a good blob's worth. Doesn't need to be terribly precise with that one because it's purely just for the colour so that I can see that it's mixed through. And now I'm just going to measure out my catalyst. So here we go. So we've mixed up. There's no marbling in the colour there. It's just thinned it out a little bit more as well. A little bit worried about the bubbles, but we'll see how we go. Not much choice. We're ready to pour in a mould and see how we go. There's one other thing that I'm going to do here to try and cut down on the amount of bubbles is do a high pour. Um, the idea behind that is that having a thinner line, a thinner dribble, cuts down the likelihood of there being more bubbles in it. So we'll see how it goes. So at this early stage it's looking like a fail, but time will tell. If I get a good, good enough uh, skin on the top there, if that skin stays thick enough and I should be able to actually do a mother mould over the top of that. So I've left this overnight to give it a good chance of, of setting and there's a nice thick coating on the top of the skull there. Now that is actually going to be the bottom so I'm going to 
at this stage, whilst I don't think it's actually worked very well, I'm going to presume that it has, and I'm going to fill that with plaster to actually act as a mother mould for the base of the skull, so that that keeps its shape, uh, because I think that's more than thick enough to accommodate the detail if it has picked up the detail. principle at least it looks like it's actually worked quite well. Um, what it's going to come down to is what the bubble situation looks like. So I'm going to get rid of a bit more of this clay. Okay so there's no two ways about it. The silicon is very very tough. I'm going to have a hard time getting that skull out of there. So I'm going to aim at putting a split down here. Not all the way through but enough that I can sort of crack the mould to at least investigate what level of success I've had. Um, if I had been more confident with the mould actually being okay, I probably wouldn't have bothered with it. I would have just sealed that bit over and done the second part of the mould before continuing. Um, but because I think I added a little bit too much catalyst to the mix, I just need to be a little bit more investigatory on the actual success of this mould. So, so I've just recruited my young son and one of his mates to see if we can give me a hand. What we've got to go and do, this is very tough silicon, so we've got to try and open it up a little bit so that I can sort of get this sucker out. Okay, that's basically what we're trying to do. Hopefully what I'm doing. So get my fingers in there. Yeah, pull it out. Carefully yeah, scoop the back of the car. The bottom bit is, is um, awesome. Actually, I'll tell you what. See if that will separate from that bottom piece. There we go. Alright, gently put that aside because I do need it. And we'll go forward, not backwards. No, that's good. Is it coming? <gasps> no. <laughs> it's tough stuff. Oh my god! That's it, that's it. <sighs> have it out. What's it look like? That actually looks pretty good. It's actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot more bubbles than that. I've got a tiny little seam at the back there. Picked up all the details quite nicely. Like to me, I think we've actually got a successful mould there. Excellent. So I'm going to wash that, clean it up, and then see if I can put the head back in it so I can do the other half of that mould. Goes. The next trick is going to be getting this sucker back in, but hopefully that should be a little less difficult. So let's give it a go. bad at all. You can see the split that I had to do at the back there but that does close up very tightly so I'll run a band of duct tape around the outside of that to make sure that that's nice and tight and closed. Now, um, the irregular shape of this is actually going to work really nicely. All these lumps and bumps is going to help it key into position quite well. The one thing I am going to add here is uh, just a wedge out of this. Uh, that's where I had to cut the mould unexpectedly. You can see the movement there. So I had to cut that unexpectedly to get the um, skull out. So I'm just going to cut in a keyway piece in the centre of that. That's it. I'm now going to rebox that and uh, mix up some more silicon and pour it in. So this is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to use that same sheet of tin that I had. Uh, I already have my seam line position for the thing, so I'm going to just make sure it comes back to that same seam line position. Back into position. As before, I've just run some clay around the edge there to make sure that the silicon's not escaping from where I want it to go. And then that one was just 
just about ready to pour again. So that second half of the mould is set nice and hard now. So I'm just going to crack that and see if we've got two successful parts. So there we have it. It seems to have worked quite nicely. That's the keyway position that I cut. And that's pretty much married up the shape the other pieces should be ready to roll. Again this will need cleaning up like the other piece. Once it's all declayed those pieces can go back together and the piece can be moulded.